Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Sunday, September 6th, 2020. And today I'm going to be talking about the North Carolina governor's race. So this is actually a member decided video, but I've decided to move it on into a complete series talking about every single governor race as I did the Senate elections back a couple of months ago. I will be redoing those Senate videos as we pretty much solidified all of our nominees. Democratic primaries, Republican primaries are almost all over. Um, all the important ones are over at least. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at where the North Carolina governor's race stands today. So right now, it currently has a characterization of it being a lean uh, Democratic seat. That is because there's a Democrat incumbent, Roy Cooper, who won back in 2016. Dan Forrest is the first Republican nominee uh, besides Pat McCrory since 2004. So pretty much 2008, 2012, and 2016, the Republican Party has seen the same Republican nominee uh, for governor in this state. Now, Dan Forrest is... I believe an okay candidate. I think Pat McCrory probably would have been worse, even though he did come closer and probably will come closer um, in comparison to Dan Forrest's margin in 2020. That is just because 2016 was a very good year for Donald Trump and Republicans all around. I mean, the Democrats only gained two seats in the Senate. They could have gained more. North Carolina was a Republican hold. In the House of Representatives, the Republicans maintained control by a pretty significant amount. The Democrats only went up to uh, by six seats to 194. Um, and then also in the governor's race, there were not there was not a single other flip besides North Carolina. But Roy Cooper, I mean, he's doing very well. Let's take a look at the uh, pre-COVID approval rating polls for him. This is from the morning consult. They don't do this anymore because they pretty much halted their, uh, you know, calling in and everything. But uh, they do release data, uh, you know, not as active as they were before. They don't do it every quarter. But uh, before COVID-19, um, Roy Cooper had a 47 percent approval rating and a 32 percent disapproval rating with 21 percent of voters or at least registered um, or just adults in the state don't know or don't have an opinion of Roy Cooper as governor. So this plus 15% approval rating is something to note. I mean, he's a Democrat in a Republican state. This is a state that hasn't voted for a Democrat since 2008, and even then it was a 14,000 vote margin to victory. So prior to that, um, I believe it didn't even go for Jimmy Carter. So North Carolina had always been a Republican state. And the fact that, you know, in 2008, Obama won it, it was expected to be a purple state in future elections. But it didn't go with the nation in 2012. It went with Trump in 2016 by a four point margin. Uh, but Roy Cooper ended up winning that governor's race. So let's go ahead and take a look back at what 2016 looked like for the Democratic Party. So as we look at the, uh, you know, 2016 results, this was insanely close. I mean, we're talking 0.2% in terms of the margin of victory. I mean, you can see 10,000 votes separated the two, Roy Cooper and Pat McCrory. Now, if we're looking at, uh, you know, the governor election, you do have to realize that this is on the same ballot that uh, Donald Trump was on. That means that Roy Cooper was able to win over some, at least some, Republican voters. Um, and that largely was due to the fact that Pat McCrory was a very unpopular governor. He ended up losing. I mean, He's been as the Republican nominee for, what, three elections? And then he ends up losing now, and he isn't running in this election, thankfully, for the GOP. But um, I will say Roy Cooper definitely had a better campaign than Hillary Clinton did in the state. And, uh, you know, that money spent was probably money well spent, considering that now he's the incumbent governor. But I'm not going to focus too much on 2016. This election is nothing like 2016. Now we have the two people serving in the governor's uh, office. We have the lieutenant governor and the incumbent governor running against each other. And Roy Cooper is probably going to edge him out. I mean, we're looking at margins that are very substantial for him in terms of the preliminary uh, polling data. Let's go ahead and take a look at the North Carolina numbers. Well, Roy Cooper, you know, with his approval rating pre-COVID being high, um, he was always leading. He was always leading Dan Forrest in terms of uh, governor's race. I mean, we can see from the beginning of the year throughout the entirety, actually the beginning of last year, though the entirety of the election has been leading. So at one point it was a tie. But then following that, you know, he was up by 11%. So when we think about this, you know, even Republican internals show Roy Cooper ahead by 10%. But this state typically has a number of undecideds that end up splitting for the GOP. But all Roy Cooper needs at this point is 0.1% of that 9% of undecided voters. 0.1% to win the election if this holds true on election day. And honestly, it very well might. I mean, in terms of COVID approval rating as well, this is in terms of handling the COVID-19 situation. You can see that North Carolina, you know, the approval rating dwindled. I mean, he was roughly around 60%, and now it's down to around 52 53% for him. Whereas Donald Trump's in this state has significantly, uh, you know, it's significantly lower. We're talking about numbers in the high 30s for Trump, 
whereas we're talking about low 50s for Roy, for Roy Cooper. And both of them are on the ballot. And as we look at the 2020 presidential race as well, the numbers don't exactly spell out good news for the GOP either. I mean, Biden's up 0.6% in this state. Trump very well could win it, but in the same polls that show Biden up narrowly, you know, <laughs> Roy Cooper is up by 9% on the average. Also in the Senate race, I mean, we see Cal Cunningham and Tom Tillis, not neck and neck, in a close race, but still with the Democratic advantage. If we look here in the governor's race, the Democrats have the advantage. In the Senate race, the Democrats have the advantage. On the presidential race, the Democrats have the advantage. And that's largely due to the fact that North Carolina very well could be moving over. We're going to see increased black turnout, absolutely. Possibly return to 2012, 2008 numbers, 66, 67% turnout, which would land the Democrats in the presidency and in North Carolina in a Senate seat and reelected in the governor's mansion. But um, I will say this governor's race is likely going to be uh, an easier characterization. If if real clear politics characterizes it as a lean Dem characterization, I mean, that's how you know that this race is going to the Democrats. I mean, North Carolina and Missouri have the same characterization, just different parties. And if New Hampshire, you know, if New Hampshire has the Republican up in the most recent data by averaging 31.5% and it's considered to be lean by real clear politics, first of all, that shows you that they really don't like characterizing states as safe. They really hate it. They, you know, take a look at the electoral map. We see so many toss up maps. I mean, so many toss up states. It's insane. We see Oregon as lean, but that's besides the point. But if North Carolina, you know, New Hampshire and Missouri, all states that have double digit margins of victories, expected margin of victories for their incumbents, all with the same characterization, that tells you that North Carolina it probably will be very good for the Democrats. So even if you know there's a scenario where every single undecided voter goes to Dan Forrest, he ties Roy Cooper. And we know that's not realistic. We know he's not going to carry all of them. If he only carries 50% of them, it's a done deal. You know, Roy Cooper is up 8.7% on the average. His approval rating was high before COVID. His approval rating remains above 50%. Following through COVID, he defied all expectations in 2016. The polling data indicated the race was going to be close. It did narrow up, as did the presidential race. We can take a look there. I mean, the presidential race did skew further to the right than the polls expected, which is why I think very well Biden could lose North Carolina. And possibly even the Democrats lose the Senate race here, but they would still carry the governor's race because an 8.7 margin of victory is not moving over. That's not happening. It doesn't matter how badly you want it. The Republican Party is not going to carry this governor's race unless something dramatically changes for, for Roy Cooper in this election. But you can see, I mean, Roy Cooper was up by at some points in time by a pretty substantial margin, but it was never by as high as he is right now. And he still ended up winning in the same year that Trump was able to carry Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Florida, Georgia, Texas, Iowa, Ohio, Arizona, Utah. All of these toss-up states from 2016 uh, easily went to Trump or at least in some states, easily, and the rest were hard fought, but still went to Trump. North Carolina joined and, you know, skewed to the right, as did the nation. But in the end, Roy Cooper was elected governor, and now he's serving as governor. So when we look at 2016, honestly, you know, this is not going to be a repeat. We're not going to see this close of an election. Roy Cooper is going to defeat his lieutenant governor by a pretty substantial margin, without a doubt. I mean, we are going to see you know, him win by possibly five, six percent. I don't think it'll be a nine, but I do think a five, six percent margin of victory is possible. Um, you know, looking at his approval rating, handling COVID, looking at his approval rating before COVID. I mean, he was never really unpopular. Keep in mind, he's a Democrat from what is traditionally a Republican state. Only in some elections and wave elections do they skew to the left. And keep in mind, even with Biden up seven percent nationally, according to 538, he's only up by a percentage point in North Carolina. That really attests to how Republican North Carolina truly is, because even in a race where the Democrat is leading by 7% nationwide, they're only up 1% in North Carolina. I think that gives a little bit more context as to why Romney won North Carolina in 2012, why Obama was only able to carry it by 14,000 votes in 2008, why no Democrat had carried it decades before. Um, you know, North Carolina, traditional Republican state, but this year they very well could hold the governor's mansion the democrats could hold the governor's mansion uh they could flip a senate seat and they could win this state on the presidential level but to finish off this map i'm using the terminal theme by the way if you're wondering what this is just because the dark theme just looks a little bit off with so many dark states so we're going to use terminal north carolina i rate it as likely democrat at this point i mean we're going to see roy cooper do very well in this state and this is my first characterization and we have 10 left to go so 
Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord link for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2020 election videos, my governor election videos. Again, thank you guys so, so much. This is a member decided video. If you want to know what that's all about, go ahead and click the join button next to my subscribe button. Again, for the third time, thank you all for watching and I will see you all later today.